Now that you have thought through most of the logistical details of the group, it's time to decide who you invite to the first meeting. The people on your invitation list will eventually be people you do life with. A majority of our closest friends in life have come through our small groups. They've become accountability partners, shoulders to cry on, people to laugh with, and ultimately, family. That's why it's critical that you put a lot of thought into this list. You should also keep in mind that not everyone you invite will end up in the group, and not everyone who comes to the first or second meeting will stick with the group until the end, and that's okay. The people God sends to your group will be there for a reason and for a season. The first thing you want to do is something we often do last. Pray for the right people for your group. Pray that God will give you wisdom about whom to invite. Pray for those relationships to develop and pray that the people you invite have open hearts and minds. By starting with prayer, you acknowledge that the formation of this small group is in God's hands. After you've given it to God, sit down and make a list of potential people to invite. Start with the people in your inner circle. That list will include family members, neighbors, coworkers, the people you may already do aspects of life with. After you have that initial list, broaden it to the people just outside your inner circle. Maybe someone you talk with at church who doesn't seem to be connected to a small group or someone you're friendly with at work. There may also be a neighbor that you wave at as you pass that could be open to an invitation. Most people are longing for deeper community but don't know where to start. The invitation to your group may be that first step that's needed. Once you have a good sized list, you'll want to need to think about those answers to inev inevitable questions that will come after the invite. One, how much time is this going to take? People already have busy lives with church, work, and family commitments. They will need to know up front how much time committing to this group will add to that full plate. I recommend keeping the group meeting time to two hours or fewer, and that time frame will help keep it reasonable to most people. Two, what are we going to do with our children during group meetings? This is the number one question from parents and the number one barrier to many people committing to a small group. If you're planning to invite married couples with young kids, have a solution for this issue before the group begins. Here are a few ideas I recommend to group leaders when it comes to childcare. Each family makes their own arrangements for childcare. The group hires a babysitter and the family split the costs. If another family lives in the same neighborhood, the children could be at one while the adults meet in another. Work with the student ministry to hire a female babysitter who is raising money for a summer mission trip. Work out a co-op relationship with another group that meets on another night. Or make one night a month a game night where kids are invited to take part. Or involve the older kids into the discussion and life of the group. My kids have been active members of our group through the years. Rotate childcare among the members of the group, putting two non-related adults in charge of the babysitting for a given night and rotating each week. Third, will there be homework? This question also speaks to the busyness issue. Potential group members will need to know what extra time this commitment will add on top of the weekly group meeting time. I recommend choosing a study that requires little to no homework. Book studies are difficult for most people to handle because of the reading time involved. A well-designed study will eliminate the need for homework, but offer extra Bible study and questions if it's desired. Next, am I going to have to talk during meetings? Extroverts will have no problem jumping right into the discussion, but introverts like me may take a little longer to feel comfortable enough to open up to the group. Be ready to reassure people that you won't force them to talk until they are comfortable. Good open-ended icebreaker questions at the beginning of the discussion time can help everyone feel more at ease with sharing. Next, will I have to pray out loud? This is a big deal for many people, especially if you're planning on inviting seekers and new Christians. I will never call on someone to pray aloud in the group unless I'm sure they're ready for it. Who else will be in the group? Be ready to share the demographics of the group in the invitation or the advertisement. Most people want to be in community with other people in the same life stage. If this group is specifically for young married couples, make that clear from the beginning. Next, how much do I have to know about the Bible? The people you invite are in different stages on their spiritual journey. Keeping that in mind, the study you choose should be conversational and not filled with a lot of insider Christian language. You want something that challenges mature believers, but is accessible to baby Christians. How many weeks or months is the group going to last? Be upfront with the expectation for the longevity of the commitment. 
Most people will not be ready to jump into a long-term commitment yet. A six to 12 week run with a short break before the next study will give them the peace of mind to try the group waters first before committing long-term. If I don't like it, can I leave without people being angry with me? It's a good idea to start the first week with something informal like a dinner at a restaurant to give potential group members the opportunity to test the group out before the study begins. And what are we gonna do during the meetings? I was very unsure of what a small group did before I joined one. I imagine all kinds of weird things from confessing your gravest sin during the first meeting to everyone hugging at the end. Give potential group members a clear picture of what will take place each week in your invitation and try your best not to make it too weird. Now, after you've made a list of potential invitees and come up with some answers to the inevitable questions, it's time to make the ask. If the idea of being in a small group is completely foreign to someone, it will take a little bit of time and convincing before they're sitting in your living room. An in-person invitation is always best. Give the person a call or shoot them an email to ask if you can talk for a few minutes at church or over coffee this week. During a meeting, start with the why for your small group. It will go something like this. We're starting this small group for young married couples who want to go deeper in God's word and learn how to navigate life together. We've prayed about who should be in the group and we feel you and your husband would be a great addition. Follow this invitation up with the logistics of the group and answer any questions that they might have. Now, don't expect or even ask for a commitment on the spot. If they decide to commit, that's great. But most people will need time to think about it and pray about it before deciding. They may also need to check in with their spouse before giving an answer. Let them know that you'll check back in a week, either in person or by a phone call. If they decide this is not the best time to be in a small group, that's okay. Tell them you'll keep them in mind for future opportunities to join the group. I've invited people several times to my groups before they joined. The right season of life or circumstance will come along for them to need the community that you are offering through your group. Don't give up. If you cannot fill your group through personal invites, it's a good idea to advertise the group through your church or maybe through your neighborhood. A lot of churches will offer group launches where small groups list their groups in the church bulletin in a newsletter or online at the church website. If you advertise this way, you'll want to have a clear and compelling description for the group. The potential group members need to know what they're signing up for in two to three sentences. You may also meet potential group members by being a part of a small groups fair or connect event at the church. This will give you the opportunity to meet them in person and pitch them the benefits of your group in a few minutes. If you take part in a groups fair, work on a three to five minute version of why your group exists and why they may want to be in it. You can also advertise the group through your neighborhood by putting together a professional looking flyer with the group details and distributing them to your neighbors. Some neighborhoods and apartment complexes also have community boards where you can hang your flyers on. If you advertise this way, be sure to have a good way for them to contact you and be prompt about responding. Social media can also be an effective way to advertise your group. You can put it on your personal Facebook page or any local Facebook groups that you belong to. Clear it with group administrators before you add it to their group's page. 